What's up, everybody, and welcome to the channel. Welcome to the live stream. I'm your host, Jesse Showalter. I'm glad you guys are here. We got Mr. Marenmoy Biswaz from India. People checking in from all over the world. Let me know where you're coming from. What place in this world are you hanging out with us from? I would love to know. Also, I love emojis. I love all sorts of little emojis, so throw them in the chat for me. Let me know how you're doing. It is freezing cold where I'm at, so I have hot coffee right now to try to keep me warm. I'm hoping you guys are doing all right as well. Let me know if you guys can see me, you can hear me, and everything's going all right. I just want to make sure things are good. Today, we're doing a, we're doing a live stream about designing. We're going to design some stuff, which is going to be fun. Amanda said, I would like to be a designer. Uh, I still haven't started yet. Well, hey, I tell you what, this is a great place for you to start because in these live streams, I like to do some live design stuff. I like to answer questions, allow you to ask as many questions as possible, and hopefully those questions make it all the way from here to Charlotte, North Carolina, or all the way to Algeria, where Amanda is and the rest of you folks are. We got people from India, people from Indiana, hey, from Colombia, what's going on, everybody? So excited you guys joined the live stream today. Uh, hey, yeah, freezing cold, freezing cold, okay, so really trying to keep, I'm going to try to keep my hands warm because I, you need your hands to do work on the computer. Um, all right, well, here's what we got going on today. We got a starting design file. I'm using Adobe XD. If you don't know how to use Adobe XD, don't have Adobe XD, uh, it's free. It's free to download. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I just like Adobe XD. I like Figma too, so sometimes I use Figma, sometimes I use XD. Today, we're gonna be using XD. I have a little starting file, and literally the only thing that's in this starting file is this awesome little record uh, graphic and this needle that actually pulled from an Illustrator file. Um, and what's cool about Adobe XD is you can open things up first in Illustrator, grab those elements and just paste them right in and bam, they are right there. So they got all the layers inside of them, all the stuff we need. Um, we're just gonna make something cool today, all right? So hey, hey from Pakistan, hey from Vietnam, hey from India, hey from Iran, people all around the world. Hey, uh, if you want this starting file, and if you also want the ending file, that's something you can get by becoming one of my members. And so I always offer starting and ending files, as well as anything else that I ever do, as well as behind the scenes and cool backstage kind of stuff. Um, and these are some of my amazing members like Steve and Ryan and Parvon and Becky and Craig. You just hit that little join button, become a member, either an insider or a supporter. Greatly appreciate that. It helps the channel grow. So that's the plan of attack today. But before we go too far, I want you guys to start thinking about what types of questions you have for me because as I design, I like to answer those questions while I'm drinking coffee and hanging out with my people. You're my people. So really quickly, let's dive in. Let's do a little question and answer time with me, Jesse. All right, get your questions ready. What questions do you have? We had some questions about becoming a designer. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask a question for you. Oh, here's a good question, Never mind, Fahim. Imtiaz, I probably said your name incorrectly. Sorry, Fahim. How do you get inspiration? Ooh, that's a great question. Inspiration is a tricky thing. Uh, I like to find my inspiration in and outside of my medium. So as a person who does digital design, UI design, yeah, I can absolutely go on Dribbble or Behance and look for other UI designers or web designers. But I like to find a lot of inspiration elsewhere. So I really like a uh, magazine, like editorial layout. I like architecture. Uh, I like anything that uh, I can kind of focus on and drill down on smaller parts. So when I'm looking at architecture, I'm looking at shapes, I'm looking at lines, I'm looking at forms. It's, you know, it's a beautiful thing to do. So I want to look inside and outside. That's where I look, but everyone's kind of different. Uh, what is the best part of my week? Best part of my week is when I get to, ooh, that's a good question. What's the best part of your week? Best part of my week, I think, is when I get to hang out, play a board game with my family, with my wife and my two amazing kids. Um, so that's a thing. Hey, uh, Idan says, Jesse, when do you publish courses? Oh man, Idan, you're gonna be so excited for this year. 2021 is gonna be fun. We got some stuff coming out, so stay tuned. Also, not to push it, not to, not, I'm not saying anything, but uh, there might be some cool courses coming out not only through me and my channels and my platforms, but through other channels that feature me. So that could be a cool thing. And uh, if you're a member, you get discounts to any and all of those. So, um, hey, let, we'll get back to some of these amazing questions, but for right now, let's dive in 
and let's get started on our design. Hey, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, you know, spread the word, share some love. That'd be that'd be a nice thing for you guys to do. All right, um, how do we? How do you become an intern with me? I'm not taking interns, um, but maybe I will someday. I don't know. That's like that could be a thing. So hold on here. Let's just title our first layer here music player okay so we got their music player and we have this little pasteboard thing that's out there because we have some elements out here that are not on any sort of artboard so um whew, so okay man i'm talking a lot i'm breathing hard and it's still freezing cold so i need coffee holy cow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right i do have a head tattoo i saw somebody mention that that's true i'm gonna hit r for rectangle and I'm just going to drag a rectangle out uh, across the entire artboard. Let's do that. Let's start there. I could just fill the artboard with a color, but I'm thinking I might want to, I don't know, I might want to do something with this rectangle possibly. So I think plan of attack for today is let's build like a list uh, view and then like a detail view of our music player. Let's use the record and actually do a little animation to make it spin. That could be kind of cool. I wonder if we could also could we make this thing yes i bet you we could uh could we make that thing swing hmm. like you press play and it goes over and then the record starts playing we might be able to do that i'm thinking all of this up as we go so here we go i'm gonna go from a solid color to a linear gradient because that's always just a little bit cooler just always a little bit cooler to add a little bit of gradation there. Okay, let's do uh, Command or Control C and V, and then let's make a new shape on top of this. This one will be all white. We'll bring it down, do kind of like a card view. Now I can hold down Alt, I think it's Option or Alt, and just bend one corner at a time. Let's do something nice and big. I don't usually do massive border radiuses like this, but why don't we do it? So I'm just gonna hit 50. Um, in my kind of uh, inspector panel over here. So this is top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. So I'm just filling in those those two. So we got kind of got this like card view thing, right? I, I, I think that's what we want to do. Okay, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. And next thing I'm going to do is hit R for rectangle one more time. I remember when Adobe XD had like no tools except for like rectangles and basic shapes. But really at the end of the day, it's kind of all you need. Not all you need, but you know, it's it's the foundation. It's the basics, right? So we got our little our little bar. That's our little pull tab. So I'm just imagining you could or could not kind of pop that down there. That could be a thing. And I like our purple. It's okay. It's not. It it may, maybe is not the purple I would have chose. So I tell you what. Let's go back and fix our purple. I think I I always like a purple. It's a little bit more on the blue. I almost just said bluey, like bluish. <laughs> holy cow is it a morning it is a morning all right so yeah i like i just like it a little bit more on the bluish side and i don't think that our dark needs to be as dark as much as it needs to be a little bit more punchy a little bit more vibrant i think that looks a little bit better than it did before i tell you what let's take our little our little record player uh uh kind of graphic there and make it Kind of this nice light purple. That feels a little better. I like it. Okay, here we go. Um, why don't I do live streams in Figma, uh, Mayan Mayank? I do. I actually just did one recently, and I like to mix it up. Um, I'm an XD fan because I like, I just, I don't know. I, I like the, the Adobe Suite, but I love Figma too. So I'll start trying to mix it up a little bit more. I don't want to be biased because I like them all. So I'm going to hold down shift. When I do that, I'm able to kind of constrain and size things down. If you don't do that, you're going to get wonky sizing like that. You see that? So we don't want that. So let's put our little record player up here. It's kind of just like a little indicator. We're telling users like, hey, this is music that you can play. You want this. You want to play this music. Now, I don't think I'm going to use a whole lot of a contrasting color or some sort of accent color, but maybe I should. Maybe I should pop. Ooh, what's a good, oh, you know what? You go purple, you always got that yellowy gold color. It pops, it looks nice. I like it. All right, let's create some rows here. Um, and here, here's my workflow when I create rows. This is a common thing. Table, row, cells, whatever you want to call them. Cells, rows, whatevs. Okay, I'm going to draw a rectangle out. And that rectangle, at the end of the day, 
it's going to be invisible. You're not going to be able to see it. So I'm not going to have this border on when we're all done, but this is how I kind of start this, this kind of workflow. I'm going to hit Command-C, Command-V, make another one of these guys, and this is where I'm going to do kind of like my image, right? So let's go, I don't know, 60 and 60 for the image. Let's do some nice rounded border radius there. If we want to, we can make our image a little bit bigger. This is literally me just like wireframing, wireframing stuff out, right? Okay, so let's pop and let, well, let's get some, you know, I'm not using a grid right now. Should I be using a grid? I should. I'm not gonna though, you guys. Hey, I'm breaking the rules. I'm doing bad things right now. So I'm just gonna space 30 pixels away from the side of the artboard. And I'm gonna try to get a similar thing up here. Yeah, it's close, it's close. But for all intents and purposes, you wanna use a, for most, for most situations, you're gonna wanna use a grid, absolutely, okay? I'm gonna hit T for text. I'm gonna pop that in there and I'm gonna write a, a so song name. Let's do song name. Sorry, my microphone is in the way. Song name here. And let's just go back to our selection tool and then let's put band name, band name. Here, okay, so what do we want to use today? Let's try something like Montserrat, uh, Montserrat. I like Montserrat, and let's do something like a little bit more on the medium side of things. I like that, that's looking all right. Um, okay, and I have, I have just a little bit of uh, some assets. So you can see this is my, uh, my Illustrator file that had our little record player in it, but I also have a couple of couple of images here. So let's pop like Blink-182, big fan, obviously, because uh, that's the age that I am. Um, okay, so let's go Let's go up a little. Nah, let's stick it down to 20, okay? Let's type the band name here, Blink, uh, and I think there's a dash, isn't there? Yeah, Blink-182, something like that. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to give some contrast. So let's go down to about 12. And one thing we're going to do here is why don't we come up for the color of our text and why don't we pick that kind of purpley color boom i'm gonna pop that into my swatches i'm gonna come over here i'm gonna say hey save that i like that a lot i actually like this gray color it's a little too it's a little too gray um actually the band name's supposed to go here wasn't it blink dash 182 what's a blink 182 song somebody name a blink 182 song ready set go uh tell me if you can get it before i get it then you get to pick the song name that goes here um I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds to think of a Blink-182 song. Come on, come on, come on. You guys got this. All right, you're too slow. I'm doing it. Uh, all the small things. That's an old school one right there. All the small things. I beat you to it. Okay. Um, okay, so I like this. It's just, oh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it down. So I'm just kind of connecting these two um to each other a little bit oh somebody said adam's song okay you win you win i'm putting it in lula adam's song that's the blink 182 song we're going for today so this is sorry i just sniffed in the microphone that's gross i'm gonna have a little bit of a cold pardon me everybody uh just normal cold nothing serious all right so i'm just gonna get this to you this is where it gets tough ready here's the challenge i want the name of the song to kind of take the the priority, like the emphasis, that's the first thing you see. I want you to be able to see Blink-182. I don't want it to jump out at you, but I want good contrast for accessibility purposes. So this is where we play the game of how light is too light, how dark is too dark. Uh, we're gonna go right there just for now, okay? I tell you what, to give a little bit more contrast because these are both medium weight, I'm gonna bump one of them up to semi-bold. See how we just now all of a sudden we have a little bit more contrast? You'd have a lot of contrast if you bumped up to like extra bold, that's too bold for us. Or maybe that's how you like it. Bold might work, but I'm gonna stick with semi-bold and over here in medium, maybe we jump down to light, light's too light. You see that? Bad contrast. Okay, so we're learning lessons of what to do and what not to do. Now, uh, the next thing we could do is we're gonna take the border off of our, our, our actual row here. I'm gonna group these together, Command G. Then I'm gonna take my image. Let's give it a little, just a little bit of shadow. I like to keep my my shadows, drop shadows below 10. So let's go nine pixels there. See how it just gives like a little bit of, a little something. I'm just gonna keep making that noise. A little bit of something there, I like it. Um, and then let's do a play button. Why wouldn't we do a play button? I don't know, let's go. We're hit E for ellipse. 
let's drag a little play button out there. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. We're gonna. T I tell you what, we're gonna turn the border off, and we're gonna do a little drop shadow like we did on the other one. Let's bring it down to nine. Let's make these things match here. I'm really waiting for Adobe XD to introduce like copy style, like layer style, similar to Photoshop. That'd be a big deal. I'm hitting the uh, just balance, or I'm just kind of horizontally like distributing and balancing everything with my tools there. So now we have a little play button over here. You may not need a play button. I don't know, it may not be necessary, but let's do a little, whoop, a little triangle in there. And we're gonna do a little optic balance optically balancing things. So here, let's take that, boom, 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 and drop a little play button. It's off black, it's not pure black. Never use pure black in your interface design. It's just too dark, it's just too dark. Now watch, I'm going to vertically, horizontally balance these things. See how it doesn't look balanced? Because the butt end of this thing is just a little bit heavier, it looks like it's unbalanced. So we actually have to, instead of mathematically balance, we have to optically balance, which is just a fancy way of saying, eyeball it. So I'm just gonna use my eyeball and push it over till I feel like it looks right. I like it, now it looks right to me. Now what doesn't look right is how massive this, uh, the actual play button is inside. That's too, too much for me. So there we go. Now we have a little play button, okay? So let's take these, again, let's just optically balance because I don't like what happened there. I'm gonna punch it over just a little bit. I'm gonna group it together. Let's go back to our layers panel here and call this, the play button like that. I'm gonna hit Command or Control K and I'm gonna make a component out of it, okay? Everything's centered, everything's aligned, everything's feeling really, really good. So then what I can do is I should be able to just group these things together. Let's call this the row, okay? Something like that, pretty good. Um, we have our row, oh no, no, get that background card thing out of our row. There we go. Get our row up above in our layers panel and we'll call this the card. And what did we do? Ungroup everything. Goodness. Get it, get your life together, Jesse. Okay, let's group these two things together down here and call them card. Whew. Layers, layers, name your layers, everyone. Okay, and then we'll call this one the row. See, when we don't name layers, this is the problem we run into. See, look, I'm not putting the proper things into my into my row. Boom, like that. Let's call this one image. Let's call this one text. Boy, oh boy, this is the boring part of design, La naming your layers. Okay, we'll just call this BG. All right, so now we have the row. I like this. I like where we're going. Let's, oh, no, no, let's bring our whole row up a little bit. It doesn't need to be so far away from the top of our card. But then let's press Command or Control R, repeat grid, and boop, I'm gonna bring a bunch of these things down. And then I'm just gonna bump them up. Because remember, we evenly spaced everything. It should be the exact space that we like using that card. That way, now, that was my workflow. Everything's centered within the card, and the confines or the, the borders of the card Literally, just, all you have to do is just stack them on top of each other. Super nice workflow, okay? Now, what's really cool about this too is then I can take all of my images, like bump, let's take this, let's take all these, let's pop them in, and it just repeats them like that, okay? Oh, let's zoom back out. So now we have something like, this one can be, uh, what is it, rise above. Sorry, I love punk rock music, so you're gonna get a lot of black flag and blink 182 and you're gonna get the boss tones uh let's what uh uh, uh 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 rascal king oh my gosh we're gonna play like music if you like punk rock and you know any of these bands you just speak up you know because that'll be fun the boss tones this is uh this is the misfits yeah let's go miss fits let's go last Caress, that's the name of a song, a misfit song. And then down here you got New Found Glory. Name a New Found Glory song if you know it. Hit or miss, I beat you to it. Um, Cause, yep, it's not your fault, the delay. The delay in the stream, maybe you knew these songs. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I like this. I like what's going on here. We probably need just like a little bit more something up above um, to kind of, anchor the rest of this design, right? Otherwise, what do we have? We have not a whole lot going on here. So I'm gonna take the text that's there, fill it with white, 
Um, and let, there we go. Let's do something like that. I like that. Um, we'll put it there. You know what? I'm actually going to introduce a new style, which is like, let's just bring the opacity of my text down just a little bit. Let's space these apart. And let's just put like, let's put a play button. Let's put a play button. R for rectangle. Boop. Drag a rectangle out. Okay. Take the border off of it. Something like that. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, and copy and paste this turn up the opacity and go to my purple color. There we go. And let's just put the word play. I, I, this is not a perfect design by any means. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not thinking through the UX of this design at all. So, you know, just keep that in mind as we're designing things that this is not the end all be all, but I am going to center align this thing. I am going to stretch this text out like this. And then you know what I'm gonna do? Just cause, cause it's always smart to do. Group it together, call this the play button and make a component out of it. Always a wise thing to do. All right, let's go something like that. Um, yes, let's do that. I like that, okay? Now we have our needle and we have our record. Um, we could, if we wanted to, we could immediately, and you know what, I like, I like this one. Adam's song. I like Blink-182 because that's what somebody in the chat brought up. Uh, Blink-182. Let's do that. You could replace, see my little image here? I could put the image right in there. So where's my Blink-182 stuff? Boop. Drop that in there. Look at that. It's a little record. And it's playing our Blink-182. Now we did. We lost our accent color. But did we really need it? Not really. I don't think we really needed it on this. So... I like where we're going so far. I'm just gonna move things down and around a little bit. Let's do step two, which would be our player, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna bring this over here. Now, keeping in mind that, uh, let's actually rename this artboard from list to player. Keep in mind that when you do auto animate inside of Adobe XD, you wanna have the same layers in the same order. So we, we now need to like work backwards a little bit. But before we do that, before we go any further, I say we stop and we do a little question and answer time with Jesse. All right, it's question and answer time. I'm looking through the chat, trying to find your answers. Uh, ba, 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 ba. This design you're making, Mayak says, uh, is it on the basis of Google material guidelines or Apple guidelines? A lot of talk that we should know about the guidelines and then design screens based off those. Yes, absolutely. So this is a very ambiguous design. Let me just say that. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's not very specific to the, what we would call the Apple human interface guidelines or to the Google material design guidelines. It's not one or the other. They can be strict on certain aspects. I'll say that. Um, you know, you can't put a very uh, material, Google material design like themed thing into the iOS app store. And you can't really vice versa make something to look too Apple-esque. So that's weird. Uh, I actually did just launch an application though into both app stores. And the way that I was able to do that, um, I don't know if you watched the series that I did where I launched my board game application into the app stores, like both app stores. But the way I was able to do that was by being kind of ambiguous, right? So it does have a bottom like navigation to it. Um, it, it. It does have the ability to like open up certain dialogues and modals and stuff like that, but it's not like very specific to one or the other. So that's the way you can get away with it. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm answering your question, maybe I'm not, but this design specifically is not geared towards one or the other. It's a little bit more ambiguous, okay? Um, okay, Nix UI UX. Any suggestions for my channel? Oh, a YouTube question. Uh, on UI UX only, I've just started how to grow. All right, here it is. Here's my advice. Um, the key to success on YouTube is consistency. That's it. Work hard, consistent. I've been doing YouTube for, I think, three and a half years now. Um, and I'm not saying I'm on the end all be all, but I have like 160,000 subscribers. That's, that, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, but that was a long, slow grind, dude. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody went viral on this channel. I'll tell you that. So you got to show up, you got to put out consistent content and you got to put out good quality content where you're actually helping people. So don't think about growing, think about helping people. What's the thing that's going to help people in the end? 
that'll benefit everybody, you and them, right? If you're just helpful and consistent. Okay, so that's that's my advice on how to grow a YouTube channel. Ooh, what are some good articles Fahim has to read? A lot of stuff is available on Medium, uh, but may not be worth the read. Oh, it's true. There's a lot of people putting content out into the world, so it's not, maybe it's not all good. I don't know. <laughs> maybe my content's not good either. Um, so yeah, what articles to read? Ooh, yeah, I don't know. That's a toughie. Um, I'm actually, I don't read as many articles anymore. I'm, I'm like a big video watcher, but um, there are still a couple trusted resources. Like I really love the Spoon Graphics website, their, his blog, because Chris Spooner, uh, he just, it's just all tutorials. It's just all how to do stuff, which I love. Um, Chris Coyier, CSS Tricks, if you're looking for front end development, it's also a pretty good one. He's still, he got some design articles on there as well. And on Medium, um, I used to really enjoy Envision's Design Better blog. I don't know if they're really updating or keeping up with it anymore, but that's that that was a good one for me. Um, are designing dribble kind of designs are okay for a portfolio? Oh, is designing dribble-esque designs good for your portfolio? Yeah, it can be. It's more effective for you to design um, not just a single dribble shot, but a case study and actually put in the work. This is a hard thing to do when you don't have a client is people are like, what do I do? How do I, what am I designing for? You're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to come up with an idea. I did an entire video entitled, uh, projects to do when you don't have clients. So maybe watch that video. Uh, maybe that'll be helpful to you, but it, it should give you the idea of like, Hey, you need to, you need, it needs to be a little bit more robust than just a single dribble shot, especially if you're trying to get clients out of it. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, starting to learn UX, any boot camps you recommend or are there better ways to learn? I think they're Boot camps aren't bad. Don't get me wrong. If you want to do like a general assembly boot camp or something like it, it's good to go. Go for it. Um, I would say though, start start with content online. I think you can learn a lot. I think you could read a couple books. Um, I think you could read some Don Norman books. I think you could read a, read a Steve Krug book like Don't Make Me Think, and you could learn a lot about UX. And you might even understand like I have a video about like a UX um, crash course. Watch that. Decide if it's even something you want to pursue before you even spend the time and money and energy on a boot camp. So, okay. Um, why should you never use pure black? Ooh, man. Okay. For a few reasons. And this will be the last question before we go back to work. Um, why should you never use pure black? It's, it's just too black. That's one thing. It's just too dark and it creates a level of contrast in your application. That's hard to come back from, right? So if you're, when you have very harsh contrast, it's like you, you have to, everything has to fight itself. So when everything's just a little bit softer, it's just a little bit easier. Uh, it's like veering in a, in a car, right? Like if you veer too hard to the right, now you have to overcorrect. It would have been better if you just took smaller kind of like turns on the wheel. Does that make sense? That's a bad analogy, but that's the best I got. And that was question and answer time with Jesse. All right, let's jump back into our project. Here we are. Um, I'm gonna kick myself actually out of the way over to the left-hand side here. And um, we need to get back to work and get this thing cracking. So what do we wanna do? Well, 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 well. Okay, I have an idea. If we're gonna do a little bit of like, uh, like auto animating, I wouldn't mind seeing this entire thing kind of scroll down. So luckily we have this thing, it's just called row see that in our layers panel and we can just grab the whole thing and over here just scroll her down um yikes but and i tell you what we're gonna leave it half off the page like that and turn the opacity down so that's a thing you can do um then i tell you what let's group this whole thing together up here let's call this now playing um and Woo, yeah, 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 yeah. That's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be interesting. Um, I tell you what, let's get rid of it over here. And I'm gonna, I have an idea. So I'm gonna zoom in really quickly. Once we go here, I wanna, I'm actually gonna display the actual information of the song and the band down here. So what do we put up here? Maybe just a simple, what we call like a screen title, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste and bring this up here and it's just gonna say, now playing. And, uh, oh, go back, grab the text. I'm just gonna center it on the screen, I think. Something like that, okay? But I'm gonna bring the opacity of it down and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually kick it over about 30 pixels from the center, okay? 
Now what happens is when I bring this in over here, boom, paste it back into the same spot, what I'll end up doing is grabbing my text, bringing my now playing title, bring it back into the middle of the screen, which it should be, there it is. And then I can bring all of these elements and animate them off the screen like that, okay? Um, the last thing we could probably do, yep, 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 is let's just shrink this card down a little bit like this. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna bring these, we're, let's bump up the size of our record and we'll kind of lay it over. That's kind of, I want this to be in the middle kind of. So let's just center that and figure out where our record needle needs to go. And boom, let's do something like that. Let's just, let's, let's, let's try it, okay? So let's do a quick auto animate, okay? Um, let's grab this entire row here click over and we'll say on tap we want to auto animate let's ease in and ease out oh maybe let's try a little snap and let's do it let's let's lengthen the duration of this animation to 0.6 seconds shall we and then um we're gonna need we're gonna need a back button uh let's let's just create a back button really quickly okay let's zoom in Okay, and sorry, I just sniffled in the, into the microphone again. I did that, you guys, I'm sorry. Okay, R for rectangle. I'm just gonna make a little rectangle here. Let's just bend the edges, take the border off. I'm making this really quick. Uh, it doesn't need to be the most fantastic back button in the world. I think I even have, I think I might have a noun project arrow. Yes, I do. Thank you, noun project. We appreciate you. We always appreciate you letting us take icons from you. Um, in a real quick hurry. So, come on. Let's. Can we all confess that we just take stuff from Noun Project and we don't give credit? We just kind of use it. It's bad to say, but it's true. Um, all right. I'm gonna put that inside there. Boop. I'm just gonna align everything. Let's call this my back button and make a component out of it. Um, okay. Cool. So I'm gonna copy that back button. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna lead it off the edge and turn the opacity of it down. And now we should be able to, in our prototype, we should be able to lead back, okay? And we get the same thing, tap, auto animate, snap 0 0.6 seconds, um, and it should work. Let's bring up our, um, let's bring up our test and just see how it looks here. We should be able to tap on Adam's song, it goes in, it goes out, okay? It's pretty cool, I kinda like it, I'm kind of into it. Now, we'd want like all the controls and everything here to show up. Um, that could be kind of cool. Um, uh, here's my question though. Should we, Ooh, uh, just trying to answer a few friends here. Oh, you're not spamming. You're doing great. Thanks, Nix. Just being helpful in the community is always a good thing. You're not spamming. Um, be helpful, everybody. Be kind, be awesome. I'm just going to turn it like this. What happens if I turn it like that? And then when we press play later on over here, could, ooh, this is gonna be really hard because I, I need to keep the same position. I wish, there's also no way in Adobe XD right now to create an anchor point, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be nice if I if I could just say, hey, anchor it here. So when it rotates, it rotates from that area. So I'm just gonna create a little circle here as a little guide for me, okay? Because I want, I want this to be in the middle. I'm gonna put it back on and hopefully we can get that to rotate somewhere in the middle, okay? Um, that That's kind of, I don't know, that's my trick for like rota <laughs> rotating it, I guess. Um, and then, okay, so let's create the interface portion now that we have all this stuff and it's working okay. Let's do, I tell you what, let's just take the same text that we had there. Let's come in to our card. Um, and what we'll do is we'll create the controls for the play screen and after we're done We'll put them back on the list screen and tuck them down so that the two kind of slide up and down like so, okay? So let's do this. Let's just br Bring up the size of this text. It can be much bigger because we're detailing now, right? Center align the text Center the text all together. It's looking pretty good like that. I like it. It's probably just a little too big in my opinion. So let's bring it down. It doesn't need to be so ginormous. Okay, let's put that there. That's working. We're gonna make our record spin, I think. Um, okay, 
And then we, we need, let's bring our play button in, shall we? Um, I'm thinking let's do something a little bit different for our play button though. So here we go. I'm gonna bring a play button down here. Now, this is a, um, this is a component. So we can do one of two things. We could either use the component or we could ungroup the component, which is what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna grow this thing up uh, or just scale. I said grow it up. I'm gonna scale it up. There we go. Let's take our off black and save our off black as a swatch color and then go back to white here. So we're kind of just inverting here with the colors because I really want the, the colors to be a little bit more um, or the controls here to just punch a little bit more, okay? Good night, but we need to group that together. Boom, put it in the middle. Okay, something like that. And then, come on now project, save us again. We, oh my goodness, yikers. We have another, where did it go? Where did it go? Uh-oh, do we delete it? Do we delete all of our, uh oh, I just lost my, I just lost my little arrow thing that I had. Man, that was weird. Uh, I have no idea where all of my resources went. None whatsoever. Here they are. Okay, that's good. Let's bring our little rewind icon in. Wow, that was weird. Good job, uh, laptop. Good job, MacBook Pro with your weirdness. Okay, so let's just grab our icon out of there. Thank you, Ryan Hook from the Noun Project. We salute you and all the work that you did on this amazing icon. I'm just gonna pump this up. I'm gonna fill it with our off black so everything's kind of matching. I'm just gonna center these, right? Okay, so how far are we away? About 52 pixels, all right. Evenly space it there. So we wanna be able to rewind and we're gonna flip this horizontally and fast forward. But then, you know, somebody might ask, yeah, but like how much? So let's just do like 15 seconds or something. We'll come into our icon, boop, and we'll just do a little 15 inside of it. What color should it be? Our off black to make everything match, just like that. I like it, it's very nice. The 15 might be a little bit too big inside of our controls, but it's okay. We want people to see it, so this works, okay? So let's group that together, group that together, group all three of these buttons together and call this control, like that. And now we have to do the tedious work of creating a little, whatchamacallit, a, um, like a, a waveform, okay? So let's do a waveform. How do we do a waveform as quickly as possible? Um, I'm gonna take R for rectangle. I'm gonna draw a rectangle out. I'm going to, let's see how, how fast can I do this? I don't know. Let's go here. I'm gonna go purple like this. Uh, three is a little too thick for our waveform, or maybe it's not, I like it. I'm gonna hit repeat grid. I'm going to, I'm gonna just make a whole bunch of them. Two pixel space in between, boom. There is the start to my waveform, like that, right? Can we come in and can we edit? Oh my gosh, oh my goodness. Okay, here I have an idea. Let's make it even quicker. Okay, I have a waveform like this. Uh, yep. Nope, it's gonna change all of them. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to grab the entire repeat grid, ungroup it from the grid. I'm gonna start grabbing individual, individual uh, rows, and I'm gonna hold down the option key, and I'm just going to size some of these things down so that it makes sense. I'm gonna sneeze here in a second. I'm so sorry, everybody, here it comes. Ready? <laughs> Yikes, okay, just a little bit under the weather, sorry. All right, so let's zoom in. I know this is like the real tedious, boring part. I tell you what, while we're doing this, why don't we jump out here and ask a couple of questions, answer your questions. I've been replicating lots of app screens and I will do it for one more month. I read all about the UX process and laws. What should I do after replicating tons of app screens? Hey, that's a great process and a great way to do it. I think you, you're on to it. Um, so what do you do after you've replicated? Um, I think then is a great time to start coming up with some of your own ideas, right? Uh, this could be uh, like your own, maybe you have a business idea that you've always wanted to do. Um, that would be a good time for it. Uh, so I would, I would start building things that you're actually passionate about. That's a good 
good thing to do. That's a great start. Um, but also good on you for just taking the time. And a lot of people don't like that. They don't want to take the time and just create lots of things. And, you know, they feel bad about copying or whatever it is. You're not copying, you're learning, you're growing, right? If you don't, when you don't have a style of your own yet, you have to just start replicating other people's styles. And that's a good thing. That's an all right thing, in my opinion. Let's answer another question. Ah, right. The brand says, yo, Justin, finally catching you live, dude. Dig the channel and your work. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Ba, 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 ba. Industrial designer, but I love UI and UX design. Juan Pablo Velez Castaneda says, do I need to know how to code to become a UX designer? No, you don't need to know how to code. You just need to know um, about UX, really. And then from there, uh, you can do whatever you want to do, bro. So that's what I say. All right, let's kick back over to my screen. Those are good questions. I have just kind of like manipulated a little bit of a waveform and guess what? I'm just gonna pop it over. I'm duplicating one of the sections of my waveform. I'm going to flip it around like this. Boom, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit more just to kind of, yeah, we're just gonna customize it a little bit. I'm gonna take a couple of them away Boom, like that at the end. And then I'm gonna do one more, flip it again. Boom, like this. And then let's take everything from there to there and delete all those. And look, check it out. We'll take this portion and we'll turn it to our light gray to show that it's playing through, right? Okay, let's grab that light gray that we have. Boom, save it in the swatcher, uh, swatches and let's reuse it. It might be too dark. Right? So this is one of those things where I'm introducing, I'm gonna introduce another neutral light gray color because it's just too, it's too dark. There's too much emphasis being, that you know, it's being drawn to, the, the eye is being drawn to. I'm gonna group the whole waveform together, center the whole thing, and boom, now we have a waveform. Okay, now we're playing our thing. Now here's what we want to do. Grab everything, the waveform, the controls, the information, I'm gonna call this, detail info and I'm going to bring it back over here uh, onto my page. Uh, so uh, maybe we could lead it out to the side and opacity it down. Now let's try our prototype again. What happens when we whoop, look at that kind of goes down and our play information kind of comes in from the side. That's not bad. I don't mind that. It's a lot of motion. I may not be into it, but Let's try it for now, okay? Then what we wanna do is, when we click our play button, oh, sorry, let's take our same, we need our detail info on all of our screens now. Boom, detail info. Uh, and at the top, just like that. When we boom, 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 press our play button, let's prototype now to here, okay? Uh, yeah, okay, we're gonna press it and our little needle should it should move over. It might look a little wonky. <laughs> it might look a little wonky. I don't know. But then uh, we want to have another one. Okay, let's do one more. And in this design, we're gonna grab the record itself, and we're gonna we're gonna rotate it 360 degrees. Okay. Um, so it doesn't look like it's moved. But it has. It's actually it's actually rotated an entire 360 degrees. I actually think we might have a problem because I think the record is not perfectly circle like, like a, a perfect circle. So it might kind of rotate a little wonky. That's okay. We don't mind. So it's gonna start playing. Um, yeah. Let's. Uh huh. Yep. Let's try it. I don't know. Let's try the whole thing. Let's see if it works. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Let's go here. We click on the song. We click on play. Oh, our little needle. <laughs> That's cute, man. I like it, okay? So why didn't it start playing? Because once we press play here and move to this uh, artboard, we need to prototype a on the artboard itself, move to the other artboard, a timed trigger. Let's give it a little delay of like 0 0.5 seconds and we want no easing. We don't want it to like have any sort of easing. We just want it to start going linear, auto animate, and we want it to take, I don't know, three whole seconds to r rotate that thing around, okay? The 360 degrees. So boom, press play, and it starts playing! <laughs> 
That's fun, man. Okay, then we want it to keep playing, don't we? We do. So we're gonna grab this artboard. We're gonna go back time, uh, zero seconds delay and zero seconds on the animation. So now it should loop. There might be a little bit of a glitch, but that's okay. That's okay, that's okay. Press play, it starts. It starts playing. Watch, it goes all the way around 360 degrees. Ah, it starts again. How do we get it to, how do we get it to play a little quicker? I, oh, you know what? I know why it's not. I know why, because we have a delay. So let's just set the delay so the minute that the needle hits the record, it plays. That should, that should fix it. Let's set the home so our, we have this new flow of ours. All right, let's go to the song. Let's press play. Record goes, or needle goes. The record plays and spins, and then it just keeps on going. There's a slight little pop right there, kind of stop, but that's okay. Check it out. That works. Let's go back. Everything goes back. There it is. Play again. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm real happy with it. Um, it's. I'm not saying it's the end all be all. There's still a few little things that we could do to kind of tighten this thing up. Like we could make our waveform actually kind of move and dance. Um, we could also, um, we could create a state here for our play button um, so that it, once you press play, it, it, it turns the little play icon into a pause icon and then you'd be able to hit pause and pause the music and then it's ready for you to play again. So that's a thing you could do. But hey, you know, for what we have going on here, pretty cool animation, everything. I like it. I'm into it. Okay, cool. Rotate it by 720, somebody said. I don't think you can actually. I don't think Adobe XD lets you go past 360 degrees before it just circles out again. So, okay. Well, that's it. Hey, that's it for the day. That's the design work. Let's go back and ask a little bit more Q&A time, and then we will be getting close to getting up out of here. All right. So, uh, I've had lots of fun so far. Ah, let's see, finally catch, oh, okay. I want to create a similar concept with a rotating record, but for iWatch as a daily UI challenge task, this will look amazing. It could look really cool if you frame this thing up in a phone, that could be rad. We didn't use, there's some other really cool kind of features in XD we could have used like 3D transforms. That could have been cool to see the record kind of like transform out, uh, maybe it from like sleeve to like flat so you could see the whole thing. That would have been really, really cool. Um, I've moved on from drinking coffee and now I'm drinking my legend nootropic energy drink because I love it so much. Add masks on the wave. Oh, it feels great. I could do that. That could be fun and animate it. Yeah, you totally could. Hmm. The problem I have in my mind with the waveform is that it might, right, when you're animating it, it's going to move at the same timing as the record spinning. So it has to be that same three second timing. I wish you could do time, you can't quite yet, but I hope they get there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't do timed transition on states. So I wish I could set up the waveform. Let's go back and look at it really quick. I wish I could set up this waveform to be a state, right? Uh, it'd be really, really easy to do. Um, we come in here, we grab our waveform whatever, let's bring it over here so we don't mess up our design at all, right? And then we could, hey, like turn this into a component called wave, and then we could set a new state, state two, where, you know, the different areas of the waveform have crunched in and grown out and bop, 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 like that or whatever, right? And then it would be cool if you could say, hey, I'd like it if you could, yeah, see, there's no timed transitions here. You can tap, and go to auto animate over to state two. And then once you're on state two, you could do a tap auto animate back to the default state. You could do that, right? But it would be cool if you could create independent time transitions for components so they just naturally move on their own. Oh, that'd be really cool. And then I could take that and pop it in and then it would be moving you know, at a different rate than the record was spinning. That way it doesn't look so mechanical and, you know, robotic. But that's something I, I wish would happen in the near future inside of Adobe XD. Uh, let's see. Uh, Momen Musma says, I have an app idea and I designed the app using Photoshop. How can I make it a real app? Hey, I just did an entire series. You should go check it out about using 
uh, Figma. So you convert your file. So redesign it in Figma. Uh, sign up for Bravo Studio. And then I just built an app uh, in Bravo Studio. Like it's a board game app. So you can find this on Android and the iOS app store. It's called Cardboard Nerd. You can download it right now. It has information, has videos. Uh, later on, I'm gonna have accounts and favoriting and all sorts of stuff, but use Bravo Studio. Watch the series, four part series I just did. You can make your own app. I promise you, you can make your own app. Really cool. Um, oh, look, yeah, Soral just was like pointing you to it. So yeah, that's it'd be, it'd be fun. Cool. Uh, my Yank says, please reply to my latest question. I'm on 99 Designs and I just began to play contests in the field of app screen design there's lots of real life projects is it better to play contests and earn rather than working on mock projects hey listen if you can get paid while you're learning that's the best possible scenario so you know back in the day when i was first starting i would tell anybody that i was capable of doing any kind of design it was not necessarily always the truest statement but i would say hey i know let's i know you out there to get a website made somebody's going to charge you a couple thousand dollars I'll charge you a couple hundred and do it for you. And they say, sure, what's, well, that, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. It was, they were not great websites, I'll tell you that. But it was better for the client at, in those circumstances or scenarios for them to pay less and get something at least halfway decent that worked for them. But it'll be, be honest. I would, now looking back, hindsight's 2020, be honest, say, hey, I don't know how to do this. Um, I have an idea of how to do it, but I will charge you portion, just a fraction of what somebody else will do uh, if you would let me work on this for you. Um, I think that's a good thing. Get paid while you're learning if you can. That's always a that's always a plus. It's always a benefit. Somebody said fake it till you make it. Don't fake it, but take it. Take the opportunity if it, if it provides itself. That's what I would say. Um, I'm between, Marta says, choosing to make a course at a university in Portugal on graphic design or web design. Regardless, the possibility of doing both, what do you think is more important doing first? To make a course or take a course? Are you, are you creating content and course material? Or are you looking to take a course at a university? Hmm. hmm. Let me know. Just if you could, uh, yeah, uh, explain your question a little bit more for me. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Roberto Beoro says you are the goat. Uh, if you don't know, goat says greatest of all time. I don't think that's true. I appreciate the encouragement though. <laughs> I appreciate the encouragement. There's some people that I absolutely love that I think they are the goat. I would, I would push you towards them for that claim. Um, let's say, uh, Priyanshu earlier said, thanks for your contribution to the community. We're grateful. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm so appreciative. Uh, Hey, if any of you are interested, um, and you know, we do, I do one-on-one -on -one questions here like this, uh, with you guys. Um, I answer stuff. I review portfolios. I try to get as many as I can, but, uh, yeah, I, I can't always get to all of them, which is the sad thing. So if you are interested on, on booking some one-on-one -on -one time with me, you can go to my website, jessieshowalter.com. You can scroll down um, and you can click on the mentorship ses sessions area right here. And I do mentorship sessions on Superpeer. You can book half hour or an hour long session. It's a way from, to get one-on-one -on -one time with me if that's something that you are interested in. So if you're interested in that, consider that. Um, you know, I, I, I do a couple mentorship sessions a week. Um, and it really has benefited the people that I've worked with. So let me know. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. I take a course, not make one. Okay. Yep. Uh, I think taking a course is great. You know what? I'm again, I'm going to, I'm going to point you to something. Uh, let's go here. Let's go here really quickly on the web. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to point you to here. If you're interested in web design or freelance work, um, I'm going to point you to my boy, Rand Segal over at Flux Academy. He has a couple of courses, uh, like the $10,000 website process, uh, web flow masterclass and how to be a six figure freelancer. These are great courses. And I'm, I think that he's, he's pulling all submissions from the courses soon so that he can focus on his students. So if you're interested in learning any of these things, um, I think the 10 K website process would be a good one for you. You were talking about web design. It's a step-by-step -step process. It, it covers design development, web flow, a lot of different things. So this might be good, but you might have to hurry up to enroll because he's cutting off all entries into the course. Uh, again, um, he's, it, it's not, 
that's sponsored for me to say this. He's just a friend of mine and an awesome dude, and he makes great content and you'd really appreciate it. So, um, so definitely check that out. Definitely take a course. If it's not that one, yes, please take a course before you go to university or anything like that. Um, okay. So that's great. I got time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, let's see how much time will it take to learn at least decent UI UX skills if we give four to six hours daily? Wow. Four to six hours daily. That's commitment. I love that. Hmm. Um, I would say if you were doing like legitimate four to six hours of, of work each day, that work could, you know, comprise of watching videos, reading books, getting your hands dirty, working inside of a design tool, copying people's work, finding your style, uh, looking for inspiration, trying things again, submitting for review, getting feedback and critique from people in the community, um, all of those things. If you were doing all of that for four to six hours a day, you'd probably fast track pretty quickly. Maybe, maybe I mean, you'd have a decent foundation underneath you um, in a couple months, a couple months, maybe, I mean, once you start doing stuff like the work that we were doing earlier, um, once you start doing enough of it, like you start realizing there's a lot of there's a lot of reusable patterns that it's not like a new piece of artwork every single time. It's not you doing something that you think is pretty or awesome. It's about you doing things that make sense and you'll find common patterns. This is why we call them user interface patterns, right? Um, so you'll find things that work. You'll find things that are common. You'll find, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So you, you just want to get yourself through as quickly as possible and as close to that 10,000 hours of mastery. Um, you know, so I guess if you're going on that, I guess if you're going on that, uh, kind of train of thought, Ooh, let's, I'm, I'm real bad at math. Let's do this. Uh, let's go 10,000 divided by six, 1,666. So whatever that is, that's a lot of days. I don't know. I mean, if we're talking real mastery, yeah, it, it'd take you a while. But if you're, if you're talking about, Hey, I have, I have my feet underneath me. I feel somewhat confident. You could do that pretty quickly. Um, okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, ba, ba, ba. how much? Yep. You asked that question. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Everyone loves Rand. He's a great guy. I, yeah, let me, let me, let me say a few things. Here's a few people you should be following right now that would be very influential and inspirational to you, um, in your journey as a designer. You should be watching Rand stuff. He puts out quality stuff. You should on, I'm going to talk all YouTube cause that's my thing. Um, you should be watching Charlie Marie, um, and her homegirl Femka because they have a great podcast called The Design Life and they each have YouTube channels. They do quality stuff. You should be watching uh, Howard Pinsky and uh, his channel as well as the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. You should be watching The Future with Chris Doe and all those folks because they talk about the business of design. Um, you should be following all these people uh, as well as probably a few others uh, that are outside of your specific vertical or niche. That way you're just getting this constant this constant kind of like influence of creators. Um, yeah, that's, you should just be following lots of people, watching lots of stuff, doing what they do, doing things that they don't do. That's what I recommend. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, Hey, I think that's it for the day. We've been on for, I don't know, about a, about an hour and that's perfect for the stream. We're not doing any portfolio reviews today, but if you join me next week, we will be doing some portfolio reviews. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll be putting some information out on how you can submit. If you want the uh, ending design file so you can have all the assets, tear things apart, see how I did things uh, from the project today, make sure you sign up, become a member, join um, and become an insider or a supporter. I would appreciate that. And uh, until next time, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I hope you're designing amazing stuff, making amazing things. And I hope this stream has been helpful to you. So we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Stay safe.